At the turn of the century in 1800, there was a growing interest to educate young children to prepare them for college or professional schools. The Little Red Schoolhouse was built around 1805, which served children in District 4. It was located in the southern part of Northford on a knoll, two miles below Northford Village on Forest Road. Nature Works is presently located on the property. It is the oldest typical red painted schoolhouse still standing in New Haven County and the fourth oldest in Connecticut. There was a tiny vestibule at the entrance of the school where the children would store their coats and lunch boxes. An inner door led to the classroom. The interior is unique. When pupils sat on the benches, they faced the walls or windows. When they were asked to recite, they would spin around and face the teacher. The benches were just a long plank which was backless and slanted toward the child. It was built tightly to three walls of the building. Other desks were placed closer to the teacher's desk, which was in the center of the room. A wood-burning stove warmed the building. Wood was supplied by the parents and was cut up and dragged to the school. This was a way parents helped pay their cost for their child's education. Sometimes an older boy was assigned to the task of starting the stove before school and had to keep it going throughout the day. Reading, writing, and spelling received special attention. Students had to supply their own books. Instead of paper and pencil, they used thin slate. Later, students had to supply their own paper and quills. Large feathers from turkeys and geese would be sharpened to form pens. The teacher wrote all the copies and made and mended the goose quill pens. Students made their own copy books by sewing together sheets of paper and making a cover of wallpaper. Penmanship was very important. Some of the writing samples were so well done, they were handed down through the families. Books probably included Webster's Spelling Book, McGuffey's Readers, or the Bible. Grammar was taught very little, and geography was taught by questions and answers. Arithmetic was taught as rule of three. This was a standard phrase in the 19th century and is found in Abraham Lincoln's writings about his early education. It meant that math went as far as learning to solve problems with proportions. To cipher the rule of three, four, three, nine, and two is to complete the phrase three is to nine as two is to blank, with the answer being six. Here are some quick facts about the Little Red Schoolhouse. It could hold 20 to 30 pupils. The teacher was expected to teach all grades and still keep order. The teachers boarded around on a rotating basis at the homes of their pupils. Wouldn't that have been fun? Pay for teachers was $14 a month for men and $5.25 for women. Grades 1 through 8 were in one room with students ranging from the age of 4 to 20 years old. Older students helped the younger students. It was not unusual for students to leave school to get married or during the 1860s leave to join the army during the Civil War. In 1888, there was a terrible blizzard. Miss Ella Lane and her students were forced to spend the night at school. It is said that one of the boys crawled on his hands and knees to the nearest house to obtain a lantern so they can have some light on the howling stormy night. It is said that over 500 pupils attended this school. Over the years, efforts were made to find the names of those who attended, but only a few could be traced. Here are some of the family names. Auger, Bunnell, Ferguson, Salt, Potwine, Phelan, and Blakesley. School was held during the winter months and all the arrangements for education were made and supervised by the church community. Ecclesiastical society, not the town, the mission. When the new school was built, the Little Red Schoolhouse was vacated. Shortly after that, it was rented out as a residence to a farm laborer, but was abandoned a short time later. For 23 years, the building was subject to decay and destruction caused by weather and vandalism. It was said it was a sad picture for travelers passing by and did not look respectable. Preserving the schoolhouse has been on the minds of several townswomen, particularly Miss Clara E. Smith and Mrs. Mary A. Miller. In 1924, at the suggestion of Mrs. J.J. Lindsley of the Northford North Brantford League of Women Voters, took up the project to restore this historic building. Miss May Halliburton was president of the league when they voted to purchase the school for a sum not to exceed $25. They found it was necessary to incorporate before a deed could be obtained. Miss Halliburton secured the incorporation, which took place on September 27, 1927. It was the first League of Women Voters in the country to be incorporated. 
The deed was received on October 3, 1927 and was signed by selectman Albert Harrison, Jared Lindsley, and Patrick Nelligan. The new owners voted to move the building, as is, to a better and safer location. The church committee of the Northford Congregational Church heard of the move. They offered a site next door to its parsonage, 50 by 100 feet. The initial site plan was rescinded and a smaller parcel was later provided, 40 by 60 feet. The leak was given two years to complete the restoration and the understanding that if they ceased to keep up the property, the title would revert to the Northford Congregational Church. On October 4th, 1927, the New Haven League of Women's Voters held an all-day meeting as devoted to a pilgrimage to the Little Red Schoolhouse. Interested people were given an opportunity to help the project financially or pledge to do so later on. The cost was expected to be $500, which included the move from Forest Road to Old Post Road, a two-mile stretch by expert movers, three permits, a telephone representative, and services of Mr. Joseph Bianchi, who did the restoration. It actually cost approximately $1,100. This building served five years as a museum of early public education. In 1933, the League established the Northford Free Public Library, the first library in town. Electricity was installed and shelves were built. League members served as librarians. Students who attended William Douglas School, a four-room school diagonally across the street, were able to walk from the school to the library. In 1936, at the annual town meeting, the town voted to take over the management of the library and appointed a board of directors. Until the Atwater Library opened in 1943, the Little Red Schoolhouse served as the only public library in North Brantford. In 1956, the new Edward Smith Library was opened and the Little Red Schoolhouse was vacant again. The league had been dissolved, so on November 12, 1957, the ownership of the building was transferred from the Connecticut State League of Women's Voters back to the Northford Congregational Church. On July 16, 1968, the church leased the Little Red Schoolhouse to the Totucka Historical Society for $1 a year with the condition the Historical Society maintains and insures the building. A community effort in 1982 and continued efforts in 1996 occurred to maintain the building. In 1985, an application was made to the State Historic Preservation Office to list the Little Red Schoolhouse on the National Register of Historic Places. The application was approved on August 29, 1985. The National Register is an official list of historic properties recognized by the federal government as worthy of preservation for their significance in American history, architecture, archaeology, engineering, and culture. 